What's up traders, Tom here with another video. Today we will be discussing the great Australian dream, buying a house for you and your family. No wait, buying many houses for you to benefit from the pro housing Australian taxation system, while always knowing the government wants to protect your asset. Kind of sounds like the Fed in the US to the stock market, doesn't it? Stay tuned. So to begin today's video, let me tell you, I'm actually a huge fan of going where the smart money lies in any investment tool. It just so happens to be that in Australia, housing has many great incentives that can help you get ahead in certain property investments. This is not the way in every country, but it shows any investor to always understand the way that their country's economy is underpinned. In this video, we will be talking about how extraordinary the Australian housing boom has been, the reasons it will generally continue to strengthen, and the recent developments to the government's plans to save the housing sector again, which have already begun. I would also like to say a huge thank you to the trading community and remember to give this video a like if you enjoy it. Comment down below with your answer to this question, which is which asset do you think your country tries to protect the most? And remember to subscribe and hit that bell for more content on the financial markets. So here we have the global house price index. And as you can see, not all countries are equal when it comes to property prices. The United States actually is not necessarily the best investment for houses, it seems. And that would make sense because the United States has one of the mo most robust economies and also a great stock market to invest in. So between 1980 and 2016 that this chart goes to, but doesn't matter even if it goes to 2020, pretty much Canada, Britain, Australia, and New Zealand have actually been the stronger investment markets as a whole when it comes to property. And this is because the governments have so much earnings that comes from something called stamp duty. And we'll talk about stamp duty later in this video. So what about the house prices in capital cities in Australia? Well, no surprise again, Sydney and Melbourne are number one and two when it comes to growth. And this is because of so many people living in these cities, but on top of that, they are desirable for jobs and a huge amount of immigration comes into these two main city hubs. And that drives demand, which of course, if you have low supply, goes up, creating more dollars for stamp duty, which we'll talk about. So Sydney and Melbourne, both very robust. Other country parts, Brisbane, Hobart, Adelaide, and Canberra have all definitely appreciated over time and to a lesser degree, Darwin and Perth. And this is because they are more mining central locations and they require high levels of high job growth and also high wages because if the mining's not doing well and the jobs aren't there, the money will not flow. So the reason I'm making this video today is because it looks like Australia is in the job of trying to save housing again. They've already had frozen mortgages in Australia for people for six months. They've already had all sorts of incentives on rental and all these types of things. But now they're coming for construction. They want to save the construction industry. And to do that, they're going to offer homeowners grants to be able to build either new homes or to be able to renovate their homes if they can match the cash $1 for $1. So you could technically think, I would like a new kitchen and a new bathroom and a bunch of other things. And as long as you pay $25,000, it looks like you're going to be able to receive $25,000. Now I'm sure there'll be some kind of limit cap on how much this is. At this stage, it could be $200,000 joint income, who knows? But the point is, it is the first introduction of a major saving plan for the government and for property. That's what they want to do. They want to save property. The thing that gets me every time whenever I look at this, and again, I'm, I'm pretty pro property when it comes to Australia, 
is that the Masters Builder Association and housing industry were lobbying for forty to 50000 Of course they were. It makes them money. But at the same time, that is a massive amount of money to be basically giving away for free just to save that part of the economy. And they always do this every single time. So one of the other reasons people love property in Australia is a topic called negative gearing. I'm not going to cover it in this video because it is complex to a degree, but basically negative gearing from the Australian government treasury website is a way of losing money, but you'd lose money so that you can use it as a tax offset. So even here, if negative gearing essentially means making a loss, why do it? Well, good question, Jimmy. And the answer is we want tax deductions. So we won't talk about it here, but make sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to know more about it in the future, because it's a great policy. Don't worry about that. So it brings me to the point, stamp duty. Well, stamp duty is obviously a revenue creation. So for as long as governments have existed, they need to impose taxes to collect revenue. One of the earliest forms of taxation in Australia was stamp duty. And this was along with customs duties on imported goods, taxes on alcohol and tobacco. So when it comes to stamp duty, if we look at this chart, this is the expectation of stamp duty over time. And you can see that massive increase since the GFC back in 08 and 09. And this increase is part and parcel of increased house prices. Because as the house prices went up, so did the stamp duty. So is that kind of a thing that the government might want to do? It definitely sounds like it would be. So here's a stamp duty calculator, and I'm going to put in here $1 million, which is pretty much the average kind of house in Melbourne and how much it costs. So you can see over here on the right, $55,000 stamp duty plus a bunch of transfer and other fees. So you have a $55,000 payment that you must make on top of buying the house as a once-off that the government will literally collect and it's gone. It literally is gone and they've collected it and that makes up part of the revenue. So it's been increasing over time and you can see that stamp duty was massive. Now stamp duty is all based on the property price, remember, as a percentage. So if we scroll down here, in Melbourne, house prices have risen, risen 457%. And the stamp duty by 857% over the past 24 years. If we keep scrolling down, stamp duty equals around 21.6% of the government's overall revenue. So if you have 21.6% of the total revenue coming from one asset class, you must continue to have that. And therefore, it would be in your best interest for that asset to go up so you receive more government revenue. So you can kind of see the picture that I'm paying today. And again, it's not that I'm being arrogant about anything here. It is just the facts. This is what you must look at whenever you're looking at investment. We're a pro-property country, and it is worthwhile knowing that. Does it mean the stock market's bad? Does it mean bonds are bad? No, it doesn't. They're still a great part of any diversified portfolio but you must understand what underpins. And that's my point in today's video. Understand the kind of asset classes you're looking at. Now, as I mentioned, the states currently are raising around 21 billion a year, including 7.5 billion in New South Wales and 6 billion from Victoria. And now there are calls to abolish the tax. And the reason why is because during this crisis in the last two years, where property has been struggling a little bit, remember it hasn't really been struggling that much, because of the Royal Bank inquiry, we are seeing a lowering of the amount of properties turning over, which means less stamp duty for the government. So the government's now thinking, how can we make stamp over time? And the answer, of course, is going to be land tax. The benefit of something like land tax is that you pay a smaller amount now and pay it over a longer feed. It's like Office 365 from Microsoft. If you buy it now and you pay $15 a month, it sounds great but you're locked into $15 per month for forever, really, because you've got to use that software. So it's a much better system, but it will also reduce technically the amount of money that you're looking at getting into a house. So actually what will end up happening is the houses will go up 
because people have to pay less now. It's that normal thing that people do. Another hilarious kind of thing about property. In terms of long-term trends, well, we can see here long-term trend. Again, this chart's up to 2016, but I actually like it being there because what happened was the price was getting a little bit away from the long-term trend. And like in the stock market, if you just drew a long-term trend over anything, usually it will come back and will revert. And sometimes when it's underneath, it is a great time to buy. And sometimes when it's over the top, it is a time to wait for the opportunity. So actually after 2016, property price continued to go up and it actually did something like this. Basically went up a little bit more, came down, hit the level, and then now it's kind of here and the line would go like up like that. So we're probably just above the line and we're back at those peaks. Even through this crisis, it has held up. And again, that's because people have so much faith in property in the Australian market. They have so much faith indeed that I found this article when I was doing research for this video and it's from November 10th, 2014. And they definitely got this very wrong, but they said that house prices in 2024 in terms of guesstimates would be this high. The actual growth rate down here is, is fairly correct. It's about 7.5% I think per annum for property. And while that might not sound any better than the stock market, when you consider that you're taking a loan when you're getting a house, and that's effectively a margin loan, you can probably see why it's not that bad. Here, we have all of their expectations. These will all be wrong. But again, it's the kind of spruiking that goes on regularly in the housing market in Australia. How about how great it is? In terms of what's happening right now, there are falls that are happening, but they're not very large. I mean, national dwelling values were down 0.4%. Whether that's true or not, who really knows? And basically, overall, properties have gone up over the last 12 months. Here is CoreLogic, our main index, and they've been so sneaky recently that they have removed the daily indices and they're only now showing monthly movements. Look, you click daily, it's gone. Why is it gone? They just don't want to show you right now because they're, they're pro property. So they would like to show you the monthly movements. And it looks like there are some reductions, but overall 15.5% in Sydney and 12% up in Melbourne. So pretty amazing increases in property. Make sure you always think about the investments that you're making for your long-term future. If you're buying the American stock market or if you're buying the Australian stock market or if you're buying bonds or you're buying gold, it really doesn't matter. Think of not only your entry plan, but your get out plan in the future. A lot of people are mentioning it's great to buy gold, it's great to buy silver, but many of them never consider when you get out of those investments, how much is it going to cost you? Is there a spread involved? All of these types of things. As we mentioned in this video, the government makes money from stamp duty. That stamp duty is huge. It is a percentage of the entire property's literal price. So if you bought a property and you think it's going to go up to $200,000 and then you're going to sell it, well, yes, you could make money. But at the same time, you also will lose all of the stamp duty and your holding costs. So buying property has always been a buy it, hold it, continue to hold it, rent it, to benefit from the taxation systems, which again, we'll talk about in this channel. So make sure to subscribe and obviously hit the bell and then move forward with eventually using the capital in that to unlock other investments. So it's a completely complex subject, but I think everybody can see why it pays to know how the government is underpinned, the economy, and where they make all their money from. Thanks everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.